Hi guys, welcome to Safi Maxed. I guess you have gone through the first video on free particle and waiting for the second part and here it is. In this video, I will continue from where I left in the video as first part on free particles. We saw in the first part that there are three grave issues with the wave functions of a free particle. That is number one, the wave function is not normalizable. The speed of the particle does not agree with the speed of the wave. And number two, the probability density of the wave function is a constant. That is, the probability density is independent from the position of the particle and the time of observation of the particle. All these three issues with the wave function used in the video part one can be resolved if instead of considering the general wave function as a superposition of two wave functions psi 1 of x and psi 2 of x we consider a wave function as a superposition of very large number of waves of different wave numbers that is instead of a wave function given by this one relation which is relation 8 from video part 1 if we consider wave function of the form psi x of t equals 1 over square root 2 pi integral from minus infinity to plus infinity a as a function of k exponent iota the whole multiplied with kx minus omega t divided by dk. All the three issues will be all the three issue will be resolved if you use the wave function of equation two. This wave function correctly satisfied the Schrodinger wave equation. However, it is different from the wave function given in equation one in the sense that it is a linear combination of very large number of plane waves with a continuous spread in wave number k which according to equation 3 of video part 1 results in a continuous energy spectrum as well. In equation 2, the factor 1 over square root 2 pi is added to normalize the wave function and the function ak is the probability amplitude varying continuously with the wave vector k. The wave function in equation 2 constitutes what we call the wave packet. That is, a wave packet consists of infinitely large number of coherent plane waves with resulting amplitude varying sinusoidally, that is, a k. Now, the next target is to find the function a k only then equation 2 could be solved since the since the function a of k is independent of time therefore it can be found from the Fourier transform of the wave function psi of x in t at time t equals 0 that is a of k is given through the Fourier transform as 1 over square root 2 pi integral from minus infinity to plus infinity psi of x at time t equal to 0 multiplied with exponent minus iota kx times dk. Now let us try to understand the difference in physics of equation 2 and 3. The modulus square of the wave function in equation 2, that is modulus square of psi of x in t, gives the probability density px of finding the particle at position x in t and p of x multiplied with dx, which is equal to modulus square of psi of x in t, multiplied with ds gives the probability density of finding the particle from x to x plus dx. Similarly, 
the modulus square of the probability amplitude equation 3 that is p of k equals modulus square of a of k gives the probability density of measuring the wave vector k or momentum p equals h bar k of the particle and the probability density times dk that is p of k times dk which is equal to the modulus square of a of k times dk gives the probability of measuring wave vector or momentum in the range from k to k plus dk. Now let us find the velocity of the wave packet which is generally known as group velocity. It is given by v group equals the derivative of omega with respect to wave vector k that is d omega over dk and if I substitute the value of omega which is given by omega equals e divided by h bar and writing the value of e from v to part 1 which is given by h bar square k square divided by 2m if I substitute that value I can write omega equals h bar k square divided by 2m and putting this value of omega into the value for group velocity I can straight away write it as h bar k divided by m and this is exactly the velocity of the particle we obtain in the video part 1 on free particles. This verifies that, that, that a free particle travels with the group velocity or the velocity of the wave packet. And what we obtain in the previous part that I denoted with V sub W is in fact the phase velocity of individual waves inside the group of waves representing the particle and is termed as phase velocity. These two concepts related to the group velocity and phase velocity can be visualized through this figure where the group velocity represents the velocity of the wave packet and the phase velocity represents the velocity of the individual valves.